Uh, Daniel chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading in verse 9. Daniel chapter 10, uh, beginning in verse 9, the Bible says, Yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me up upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now, am I now sent, and when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Now, I, now am I come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set up my face, I set up my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one, of, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision of my sorrows returned upon me, and I retained no strength. For now can the servant of thy Lord talk with this, my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, neither, in the, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and touched me, one like unto the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. And then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of, of Grisha shall come. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we beg you that you might come in and meet with us this morning, that you'd stir up the heart of the redeemed. Lord, that you take this word and that you would remind us that your presence is not a light thing, that we, we don't glorify it enough, and many times, Lord, we don't even respond as we should. Lord, we pray that you would make your word known unto us this morning. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For this is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, if you study the Word of God, and this is the revelation of the, of the vision that Daniel was given of God. Now, uh, I personally believe the days of visions are far past. They ended with whomever the last living apostle was. I'm assuming it was Paul, but I don't know that. Uh, but I want you to see that the interpretation or the understanding of the Word of God is a still a very real thing. Now, don't ever take so, what someone tells you for granted. Uh, just because you've heard it all your life doesn't make it so. And what we need to know and understand is what the Word of God is really teaching. Now, what I found uh, really since I, uh, and I guess now it's been four or five years since I really sought to understand the work of the Holy Ghost, uh, I, I've learned that I can't take uh, even people's writings for granted. Commentaries is good. Spurgeon is fine, but it's not, uh, it's not inspired right. And we need to look at it. It's just nothing more than man's ideas. And, and, and so we find that Daniel, if I understand it correctly, had a vision and didn't understand it. Now, I want you to see the first thing in Daniel's vision, or in your case, in the reading of this word, Daniel didn't give up. Now, I would dare say the majority of us, uh, if we read a scripture,
scripture and it don't quite click with what we've been told. Or maybe secondly, you just have never read it before and you may not know or understand it. It's the inclination of the flesh to turn the page. Let's get over there and read something I've heard a thousand times before. That, that, that is the nature of the flesh. Uh, now, that's why he told uh, Corinth, listen, where you should be on meat, you're still on milk. Uh, that stuff you've heard a thousand times before is milk. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but a grown person will not be nourished by milk and milk alone. And, and so Daniel sought something deeper, and so should we. Now, this prince of Persia is a type of the devil, or probably was Satan himself. Uh, and so my first warning to you this morning, when you seek out to understand the word of God, uh, just uh, take for granted that the devil's going to show up. He's going to show up and he will hinder any way he can. Now we'll see, secondly, this angel, this being, this person of Christ, whomever he is, and we'll look at his identity, and the more I look at it, the less I understand who this fellow may be, but I personally believe it was the person of Christ. I want you to see that uh, he was delayed. He was delayed. Now, we understand our God is sovereign, right? But we do understand that that delay not happens because he's not sovereign. It happens for us. Uh, just because we say hop don't mean the Lord God has to jump. And it teaches, too, the devil is probably stronger than we might think he is. So going back to verse 9, the Bible says, Yet I heard the voice of his words. Now, my question to you this morning, do you hear uh, the voice of this book? Now, I believe the redeemed will. I, I believe the redeemed will hear the voice of this book. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with study of a systematic study of the Bible, but you know what I want? I want to be preached to on the Lord's Day. And, and not, again, nothing wrong with systematic studying. It has its place. But what does the Bible say? Preach the word. Amen. Then it says be instant in season and out of season. Jared, you're not pastoring right now. Be ready. Be instant. Be, be ready to be on the move. And that's where we're to be. And so I want you to see as Daniel, is des his desire was to understand what he already seen. And with that, I ask you, what is your desire this morning? Did you come down because it was Sunday, it was the Lord's Day, and you knew you were anticipated to be there, or did you come to hear from God? Uh, we need to remember we're going to get what we came for. Mm -hmm. Our God is faithful. And you know what? I'm afraid that very, very often, we, like the children of Israel, we get sick of manna. You, have, you ever, uh, have you ever studied manna? Uh, they literally say, it literally means, yeah. what is this? What is this? A little piece of bread. And uh, it was sweet, the best I understand it. Uh, now, I like sweets. I try to get chocolate at least once a time a day. But I guess if you that's all you had, you would get sick of it. And so don't get down on the children of Israel, but yet we need to look at it as a gift of God. It could be nothing. This word in front of us this morning is a type like under the precious manna, and we need to take it as such. Yet I heard the voice of the words. And I heard, and I, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face. Now, uh, I personally believe that these words, and we'll see that he comes back, I believe, three or four times to present this to him. The word was too much for Daniel to handle. That's why he passed out. That's why he ended up on his face. It wasn't a worshipful thing. In fact, it says he was in a deep sleep. And so, what would you do 
if an entity showed up, an angelic being or whatever he was, said he was in the similitude of a man. So I don't think angelic beings can necessarily do that. And uh, maybe they can. And, and so he falls because he choked on it. What do you give your babies when they first start out? You give them milk, right? And then you move up to food. Now I never saw but one person do this and it completely creeped me out, but I understand years ago people did this all the time. When my babies were little, we got Gerber for them. And, and we put it in like that. But I saw an old lady one time chew up food, take it out of her mouth and put it in her grandbaby's mouth. And like I said, it made me sick. <laughs> but it's better than that baby trying to bite off a piece of potato on its own. Mm -hmm. and, and so Daniel, and listen, we're no Daniel. Well, we didn't have the dedication that Daniel did. We didn't, listen, Daniel was in a place that was full of sin. They were captives there. And listen, when you study the captivity of Israel time and time again, remember this is not in just enslavement. It's a type of being captive by sin. They were slaves to sin. And in the middle of this, the Bible says that Daniel set his heart to worship God. And so you know what that, that says to me? No excuses. We're in bad times, so it's hard to understand God. And so he got this vision, and after he got the vision, he wanted understanding, and the first dose was just like uh, taking a newborn baby and putting a piece of steak in his mouth, and it caused him to pass out. Now, that is the word of God, dear friend. And the only advice I can give you is to keep going back to it. Yeah. Keep going back to it. Keep returning. And so we find Daniel's situation. God doesn't give up, verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set, me upon, and set my knees upon, set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Mm -hmm. So this is the position when he got up. That's right. Now, who does that? Babies. Now, uh, I was always excited when my babies learned to crawl. Matthew was a little bit delayed, and I began to worry about him, but he was big as a box of oats. So it took him a little longer. So first, he choked on it. And now he rolls him up to, an in, uh, to, a, to a young baby's position. You know what? Sometimes you're going to have to be in that situation too. It takes a long time to study the Word of God. In fact, I would say this, you'll never be done. And I believe the more I study, the less I know. Now, these young people that come around and they've done a ride and they know everything, and I understand that because I used to be one of them. Listen, and they hit about 30 or 35, they'll realize how ignorant they are. Right? And, and, and so we find that the next piece of it, when we choke on it, we need the Lord God to come along and pick us back up. And you know what? I fully believe this. If you belong to Him, He will. He's not going to leave us destitute. He's not going to leave us choking. He's going to raise us back up because, because He loves us and he, he wants us to understand the Word of God. He wants us to enjoy what the Bible teaches. And so we find that He does that. So He raises him up in a little baby, uh, a little crawler's position in verse 11, and He said unto me, O Daniel, you know what that is? That's specific for Daniel. Now, I don't believe in private interpretation. In fact, I believe the New Testament is very clear on that. The Scripture is without private interpretation. But I do believe this. You have your own right when you come into truth. Uh, you, you, you'll develop, you know, all your children. You look at your children. They all developed at different rates. And, and, and different things even. Uh, some, their conversation comes first. Some, their walking comes first. Sometimes they can feed themselves before the other one. And, and, and it's all a, a, de a developmental thing, but isn't it a wonderful thing 
He has a plan for your life. Oh, Daniel. He knew him specifically. He called him by his name. He understood where Daniel was. You know what, this morning, God understands exactly where you're at too. If it's the development, and, or, and if you're choking on the word of God, or if it's just a need that you have in your life. And listen, I'm not talking financial needs, I'm just talking spiritual needs. Listen, the devil's favorite thing to do is to keep you so busy that you won't get into that book. And, and, and he's a master at it. And, and so we find Daniel is beloved of God. Uh, and he said unto me, Daniel, O man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand up right. Now, I want you to notice two things. These are not questions. He didn't say, understand what thou, what thou hast seen? Understand what thou hast heard? No, it, it's not with questioning the voice. He, he says it like this, you're beloved, and I want you to understand the words. In other words, it's not optional. You know what? I really believe today that we think the word of God is optional. That, you know, oh, well, you know, uh, that's real good, but this is what I believe. You know what? God doesn't care what you believe. What he cares about is, his word, is the word of God. He says, stand up and believe. Mm. His anticipation in, for you, in other words, his anticipation is not for you to choke, but to chew her up and swallow it. Remember, remember when John was getting... Uh, the, uh, the vision of the revelation. Remember he ate it up? Mm -hmm. It was sweet. And after he swallowed it, it got bitter. Uh, very, very same thing. You know what? He anticipates that you'll take the bitter with the sweet. And, and certainly, we get a little down and out. You know, not, a, not, a, not every verse in that book is just, woo! I love that part. You know, the hell, the, the dead are going to be cast alive into the hell. How exciting. No, no. You know what? We need to pity those people. That's not a pleasant saying. It's one of them that will make you sick to your stomach. But he, he, believe, he expects you to believe it. Yeah. He, he expects you to, uh, uh, to, to love it as much as by grace are you saved. And that's a hard thing to do. So Daniel... His, he, the anticipation of this man, and I believe the Lord Jesus Christ, was that he would believe what was being said. Understand the words that I speak unto thee. Stand up right. You know what? We need to stand up today, do we not? We live in a day and age where people are giving up, and well, that's just the day which we live in. No, no. I am the Lord. I change not. We, we don't compromise. We, we don't, we don't uh, uh, accept it the way it is. Then he says, For unto thee am I now sent. So he was specifically sent to Daniel. You know, uh, I fully believe this. In, in your own developmental time spiritually, God will send you the Holy Spirit, and you will understand that difficult passage. You will understand with time that thing like, I just can't get this. Give it time. We're going to find it was three weeks, 21 days, while Daniel waited for an explanation. You know, uh, we'll get there to a minute, in a minute and see what the delay was. But everything you understand about that book is not instantaneous. You know what? I believe, sincerely, if it was, it wouldn't be as sweet. I, I think uh, something you have to work for, just, hey, you put out a garden and get some snap beans from it. You got to put work into it, do you not? You got to break up the ground. You got to put your beans out, break it out into rows, put your beans in, watch them, make sure the deer don't run off in them. And, and, and all that goes into that, and usually about three months, two to three months, you finally have them sitting on your table, and they're good. 
Very same thing. Be patient. Continue to look in the Word of God. Don't give up. And, and the Lord God will come. And, and in the church age, it is the person of the Holy Ghost. And He will, he will explain. He will, he, will, uh, he will make the Word to you. He'll, he'll grant you understanding. And so that was His anticipation. His demand for Daniel was to stand up. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Now, he's down here. God tells him to get up. He's obedient. And now he's doing this. Uh, you know what that is? It wasn't because Daniel, well, I guess in a way he was fearful, but it was respect. He was in the presence of, of the Lord God Almighty of heaven, and he was respectful, and even if it was an angel, and we'll hear about Michael, the archangel, in a minute, you know what? He was respected to him. See, uh, places in the abode of God and, and beings that come from the abode of God are not respected anymore. They're laughed and made fun of. That, that's one of the most wicked things the Catholic Church does is her images. Because that's how we begin to define what Christ looks like, what angels look like, what the apostles look like. Uh, that's not true. Uh, that shouldn't be our definition of the things of God. And so we find that Daniel is obedient to the request, the command, if you will, and he listens to what God's man says. Verse 12, and then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel. You know what? That's a huge request, isn't it? That, that's an amazing request in the middle of this. He says, don't you be scared, Daniel. Now, if I had been through what Daniel had just been, I'm on my second time standing up trying to listen to this uh, angelic being or the Lord Jesus Christ, whichever he is, to interpret the dream for me. If I was standing in the presence of God, I'd be trembling too. And Daniel was willing to do it. Why do you suppose he was willing to do that? Would you? I believe that he's willing to do it because he looked at the Word of God as precious. And he looked at understanding the Word of God even more precious. And so he was willing, and he was, he, he was willing to put his, his own fears aside and stand before this and hear what was said concerning the vision that he had. And uh, he makes this request, don't be afraid, fear not. Now, um, so we find the second thing that interferes, and that's fear. You know what's going to hinder your way? of looking at the Word of God, being fearful of what everybody's already told you. Well, I, I believe that for 70 years. Don't be afraid. Mom and Daddy believed it that way. Don't be afraid. Don't be, don't be scareful. Uh, so he, he, makes, he makes this uh, difficult request from, from Daniel. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, from the first day thou didst set thine heart to understand. Now, we find another thing that, that must be necessary if we're to consume the Word of God as we ought to, and that is setting, setting your heart. Now, that's a difficult thing to do. Now, we have this stove, and I don't know how long we've had it, probably three or four years, and I'm just now, cook stove, I mean, just now figuring out exactly what it worked, how to work it, and when I go by, uh, especially in the morning, going to set the oven and blah, blah. And I'm having to look at that thing, and it don't have no dials on it. Well, it does, but they're electronic. And the oven is completely electronic. And so I'm pushing buttons and trying to get it set. You see what I'm saying? Very same thing here. It's not an easy thing to set your heart to seek God. And you know why? 
This flesh is going to do everything in its power to stop it. So it's a complicated process, yeah. and it's a process that takes time. Uh, now, I don't believe, except <laughs> that's the way God wanted it, as far as this hindrance we're going to read about. If God had wanted to show up instantaneously, he would have. But you know, those 21 days was good for Daniel. And if it takes you 21 days or 21 years, it's good for you. You know what? If you go without eating for a day or two, that meal, and if it's beans and cornbread, it's going to look pretty good to you. Right? Think about going without an eat for 21 days. I don't care at that point what it is. You'll like it. And, and, and so we see then that Daniel was willing to give something of himself to define and understand this dream, and certainly we should be the very same way. Uh, so he says, to set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Now, what is chastening? Uh, what is chastening about? Now, some people will immediately uh, jump to fasting, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I certainly see where they get that, and I do believe it's a piece of it, but chastening itself is less like when you chastise your children, you're correcting them. Now, when Bella does something, and I see that it's wrong, it's very easy for me to chastise her, but what I have found the most difficult to be is seeing, not only seeing when I do wrong, but chastising myself after I realize I've done wrong. Give yourself a whipping. That's not an easy thing to do, is it? First of all, you have to acknowledge you're wrong, and then you have to whip yourself. But let me tell you, dear friend, it's a lot better to whip yourself and let God whip you. Amen. Because hey, I guarantee you, his is going to be more severe than yours. Mm -hmm. So in whipping yourself, this is what you have to say. I was wrong, and I want to be right. Mm -hmm. I was stupid, and I admitted I was foolish, but I want to be near to God. See, that's a very, a very difficult thing to do, is it not? And I believe in the day which we live, it's more difficult than ever. Uh, because you think you're right. Ever met someone and they just think they were always right about well, there's a little bit of that in each of us. And so this chastising yourself means comparing yourself to this and say, man, I was wrong, right? And then accepting it is the chastisement. And, and so we see that's a needful thing for God's people. And if we want to hear from God and we're having trouble or difficulty specifically with one passage, what we need to do is whip ourselves. And, and this is the difficult one. Hey, I don't know everything. And then it, don't, don't accept what you've been told. Accept what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing, especially when it's contrary to what you believe for all your life. Right? And, and, and so we find that uh, Daniel did this in preparatory work, in preparation from hearing from God. He was wanting to know what God said. You know what? I, I bet Daniel had his own little ideas about this vision, don't you? Remember what one of the corrections was, and I believe this is of the last days, that's my own opinion. He says, Daniel, it's going to be many years. You know what Daniel wanted? He wanted, <laughs> he wanted that kingdom uh, that held them captive defeated right now. He wanted to go back home to Jerusalem. But it didn't happen that way. The best we understand, Daniel died there. He said, Daniel, it's going to be a long time. 
And uh, so Daniel didn't get what he wanted, did he? Daniel didn't get the interpretation that he was hoping for. And many times you won't either. You won't get the, you won't get the uh, validation necessarily of what you've always thought and always what you thought was correct. Sometimes it's going to be a little different. Daniel had prepared himself for this. But the prince, and he's now saying, uh, the end of that verse says, and I am come for thy words. In other words, your request, your begging, your bequeathing God for me to be here. I'm coming for that reason. But notice this. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Now, now that uh, don't seem like a whole lot to me. Three weeks. Three weeks goes by before you know it. But you know why it seems so long for Daniel? Because he was seeking God. That's hard in the flesh, is it not? Just seeking God and seeking God and wanting to understand and seeking God. It is a very energy-filled, taxing thing. And that had about wore Daniel out. Uh, you know what? I, I, I dare to say, and this is my own self, I've probably only been there a few times in my whole life where I so badly wanted to understand and I was seeking, seeking, and seeking and it wore me out. That's what he desired. That's what Daniel wanted. And the angel, whomever he may be, says, listen, the king of Persia, alike and unto Satan, has withstood me and I couldn't get here for 21 days. I've been on my way. I've been trying to get here and there was a delay in it and I couldn't make it just like when you wanted it to. But the king of Persia, uh, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief priests, Michael the archangel, uh, one of the chief princes came to me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now, I want you to see, and this is where I think, well, maybe it is angelic beings because uh, had God, remember when they came to arrest Jesus and he said, whom seek you? And it knocked them all down. That's the power of the Almighty. And so I don't know if the Almighty was there, but see, Michael had to come and give him a little relief. Because see, Daniel was still praying. And God is not, is not confined to time and space. So if he wanted to be with Daniel, and he wanted to defeat the devil, all at the same time, the Almighty can. I don't think angels can, but I believe the Almighty can. And, and, and so we see then that whomever it is would not leave his post in the battle of the devil. Now, what do you really believe concerning Persia? What do you believe about this battle? Was it so important that that, that battle be won? And the best I can understand in this description, they didn't win. They just held the line. But that was more important than getting down to Daniel. You know what? It was for Daniel's good. And also says, me, says this to me, if there is an angelic work that occurs, there's a time schedule. There's no time schedule with God, but there are with angels because they're just a created being like you and I. And, and, and so we see that he would not give up and let the devil win simply to get down and explain something to Daniel. In other words, one could wait, but fighting the devil could not. Uh, fighting the devil was something that demanded his attention. Now, notice in verse uh, 14. Now, after Michael's relief got there, now I'm come to make thee understand what shall befall the people, uh, thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. He finally come to explain. And so that shows me it's very much a priority of the Word of God, the priority, a priority of the person of God that He wants us to understand. 
He wants us to get the message. And it takes time. Verse 15. And when he had spoken uh, such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. Now, I want you to notice two things. Uh, this speaking of the word of God puts Daniel right back where he got started. He's flat on his face before God. He's dumb or he's not speaking now. Now, before he was asleep and now he can hear, but he can't say nothing. <laughs> you know what? It's a, it'd be a good thing for some of us to be dumb for about two weeks, wouldn't it? Not be able to say a word. Just as, uh, just, and, and, and when the Bible says dumb, it doesn't mean stupid. It means that they can't say. Understanding all what's going on around you and not being able to say a word in response to it, that's being dumb and un unable to speak. You know, like I said, that'd be a good thing for us sometime, wouldn't it? Just not be able to say a word and, and, and simply have to listen. And so we find that uh, he's back flat of his face. Now he cannot speak. A condition in which if we get, we can hear from God. Verse 16. And behold, one like unto the uh, similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Now, do we have a, a, a change in the person that is speaking now? I don't know. Is it still the angelic being? I don't know. He, he says, it makes me think there may be a difference. Now he's calling it as one of the sons of men. In other words, he looks like a human being. He looks like what we think of mankind to look at. And he came and, and, and touched him on the lips. Now, does that sound familiar to you? It ought to. Because remember, uh, the angel there in the temple got up, got some... Uh, got some tongs and reached a big coal off the altar and, and crammed it into Isaiah's mouth, right? And, and then he was able, able to speak. And so he's dumb, Daniel's dumb, and now he's going to be able to talk again. He's going to be able. You know what? The very best thing we can do is when we, when we speak, is speak, is to speak what God would have us to speak, not our own ideas. And behold, one like unto the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O oh, my Lord, by the vision my sorrows turned upon me, and I retained no strength. So now we find that Daniel is getting it, and it's not pleasant. The, it, even though they had turned his back and Daniel and Isaiah and Jeremiah had warned them and warned them and warned them, it wasn't pleasant to God's men when it came to pass. Now. And the Lord God gives them, gives Daniel the vision again and said the second time is going to be worse than the first. And it wasn't pleasant. Right now, they were in captivity. Right now, remember, there's a remnant back there that Ezra and, and Nehemiah would go to in the first captivity. Daniel, there's not even going to be a remnant left anymore. And it happened. And not until the peace treaty that ended World War II, there was no Israel. It came to pass just at Daniel's prediction and he didn't like it. You know what? Sometimes when you get in that world, and I'll even go further, sometimes the will that God has for your life, if it lines up in that book, it's not going to be pleasant. It, it, it's not going to be a big fun time. And sometimes it will be. Sometimes you'll find your self rejoicing. But sometimes when you have to depart things in your life, it's not going to be pleasant. So when he finally understood it overwhelmed him. And notice what it says. Oh, my Lord, by the vision, my sorrows are turned upon me, and I retain no strength. For how 
Can the servant of this my Lord talk? And now he's a servant and he's saying, you're my Lord. So again, I believe this may be the person of Christ. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. I am so troubled. I am so overwhelmed by the exclamation. It's left me that I had nothing to say. Think about the first time that, that you thought about the true grace of God and knew despite what everybody else said, there were already vessels committed to wrath and there was nothing you could do about it. Man, Man that's a sour teaching, ain't it? I believe that Daniel's destruction, seeing the destruction of Israel for good, or what he thought would be for good, he wasn't rejoicing in it. He wasn't happy. He says, it's made me sick. I can't even stand up. I can't, I can't even talk. I, I'm troubled about the message. Verse 18, and there came, a, and there, then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthen me. So the vision is revealed. Daniel finally gets it. It makes him weak and wobbly. And then here comes the Son of God and strengthens him again and says, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. This is my will. Rejoice in it, Daniel. Strengthen. I'm going to strengthen you. Not only will you love it, you're going to preach it. And you know what? He did See, God will strengthen you in your weakest moment when you need it the most if you set your mind to understand the Word of God. And when it's pleasant, rejoice. And when it's bitter, rejoice. And listen, you'll need that kind of strength when it's bitter. You, you'll need the imputed strength of God when it's something that you really don't want to hear to start with. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus did for Daniel. And said, meaning this man, O oh man greatly beloved. So if you hear these truths, if you see this preciousness, remember this, he loves you. He's given it to you because he greatly loves you. And said, O oh man greatly beloved, fear not. Hmm. The Word of God makes me fearful sometimes, but on the merit of Christ, I'm not fearful. Peace be unto thee. Be strong. Yea, be strong. I wonder why he said that twice. I think Daniel needed a reminder, don't you? Where's Daniel at? He is a slave. He is down in the middle of the captivity. And he says, I want you to be strong there. You know where you're at right now. You're in the middle of the captivity. You have a nature that's redeemed and likened to the Son of Christ, and you have a house that is filthy and ungodly and dirty and stinking. You are a prisoner just like Daniel was. Uh, yeah. And all I can tell you is be strong. Keep, keep that inward man going. Feed him. Encourage him give, him, give him the strength that he needs. And so this bitter message that Daniel finally gave God and left him weak, the Lord God strengthened him in it and made him strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Isn't it a wonderful thing when you're strong enough to, to take the hard stuff, to take the good stuff, and the hard stuff. What a wonderful thing. You know what I see going more and more in the modern day? And I'm not talking about out in these crazy churches. I'm talking about all kinds of churches. Men, uh, I mean women looking like men, come right out in the house of God that way. Which is really no difference. But it, it, it shows me that they don't even respect God anymore. And, and, and so we see... That's a bitter thing, isn't it? You preach on that, and listen, you won't be invited back many times. You know why? Because it's bitter. They've choked on it. 
Right? All I can do is keep preaching. Because if you compromise, <laughs> you like jennies and jamborees, is what Jude said. And, and so we see then as, uh, <laughs> as the Bible teaches, we, we need to be strong in the good and bad. He came by and strengthened Daniel and he understood. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? Do you know why I came, Daniel? Do you know why I'm here? Do you know what I came to explain to you? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. He says, you got it now, Daniel. You've got to understand. You've got a good understanding of it. I'm going back and fight the devil again. <laughs> That's an amazing being, is it not? Jared will sit, uh, fix me out and see if it was God or see if it was an angel. <laughs> Uh, but man, that's an amazing being. I've got the message to you, Daniel, and I'm going, I'm going back there and down to Persia and, and put old Satan in his place. That's a strong being, is it not? So if he gives the interpretation, what could be better? If he can grant the explanation, <laughs> take it, rejoice in it, love it, because he done that for us. Verse 21, but I will shew thee that with, but I will shew thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. There is none thing that holdeth with me these things but Michael your prince. In other words, you're not going to get it the easy way. I only ever want to do it according to my understanding. There was Michael. You know what that says to me? The understanding of the Word of God is a precious thing. It is so precious that we need not take it lightly. Yeah. And, it, and if you get it, <laughs> hide it in your heart. Share it with others. Cling to it with everything you got. Been some good man down through the years. <laughs> you know, they, they may have not taught things as the Bible teaches. Just because they have a good testimony and they were and they were valiant men, study it for yourself. Look into the Word of God. See what it says. 